we're here today to check out some Highbury memories. Normally, I'd go right and go that way to the Emirates, but today, I'm gonna do a left and go back to where I used to go, a bit like back to the future when I used to go to Highbury. Come along and check it out. Arsenal Fan TV, so we're here outside Highbury. You know what, I'm kind of tingling a bit. Memories, mate, memories. And uh, I've got Claude with me today. I can never forget it. Uh, I miss it really, really badly. I really do miss it. I love it, I love it. I love the place, I love it. <laughs> and uh, also got Simon Caney, and Simon is the uh, author of this book uh called The Highbury Years. And uh, that's why we're out here today, to talk about Highbury. Simon, tell us about the book -a well, it is an effect, it's a history of Arsenal, but really with Highbury as, as one of the heroes of the story, if you like. I mean, um, we go back to the, the early 20th century um, and in fact life before Highbury when it was Woolwich Arsenal. But then coming here just before the First World War um, and then the, the years before Herbert Chapman and then obviously that great era in the, the 20s and 30s. Um, and then we take it all the way through till, till when the club left Highbury. Um, and it's a remarkable history and I think the thing that that struck me as I was putting it together was how often Arsenal have been pioneers in football. Mm. Um, from the days of Herbert Chapman, who introduced a lot of new training techniques, and he wanted a 45-minute clock up here for the players to be able to see what the time was. Um, you know, change the name of the tube station, things like that, all at his behest. Um, and you take that all the way through to Wenger, when he introduced new training techniques as well. I think Arsenal have always been at the kind of forefront of that kind of thing, and, and this, this uh, publication really does kind of get to the heart of that. Mm. And Claude, you, you remember Herbert Chapman, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. But listen, you, you, some I, know, great... <laughs> I know a guy that would probably remember him. <laughs> Ernie, yeah, of course. But yeah. listen, you, you must have some great memories of this place. Great memories, great games. I, I'll never forget the uh, late 70s when we had a we beat a, still a good lead side, 7-0 here in the League Cup. I'll never forget Ricks and Brady juggling in the halfway line, juggling the ball between them. Fantastic memories, uh, and then the Manchester United game here in 2000, uh, 2002, uh, when 2001-2002 uh, season, when um, Barthez made that mistake, and you know Henry went on to score a winning goal after mm. coming back from behind. Great memories, fantastic memories, and um, and of course when we were done the invincible coming from behind against Leicester, I think mean, Paul Dickoff scored for them. And I thought, oh no, he's going to ruin our day, you know, <laughs> on the last game. And then we, we came back and, went, and, and we completed the Invincible year. It was brilliant, fantastic. I mean, the Invincible year was, was absolutely incredible. I, I, I cite that as one of my best memories here. I mean, just coming here week in, week out, and at the time, just watching an absolute incredible team. Yeah, and I think what we, what we do here, I think Arsenal are one of the few clubs where they can sort of bookend, if you like, the, the history with such success in, in the early years. And then you come back to like 2004 with that great side. Um, and you look at almost any other team, they've never had that sort of success in the early 20th century and then in the early 21st century as well. Mm. Um, and yeah, and that invincible side was obviously uh, something, mm. something pretty special. And it's such a historic place here. And I mean, one, one of the things I'm reading in your book was the whole story about how during the war, uh, we, we were actually sharing with Tottenham and, uh, and, and some of the stadium was being used yeah. for, for the military. Yeah, and also a lot of the, a lot of the, um, the Arsenal players from, from before the war sort of playing for a, a, a London combined team, uh, sort of an England team that was thrown together um, and a lot of the games were going on here. Um, yeah, it's an incredible history of this place, it really mm. is. And just behind there, the, those marble halls. Mm. And it was kind of after the war and like you said, when Herbert Chapman came in, uh, everything really changed. Yeah, and he introduced, um, uh, with, with Charlie Buchan, um, introduced a style of football that was, was taken notice of the whole world over, no question, um, with his, his WM formation. Um, mm. And, you know, I suppose it's easy to forget that football was quite primitive back in the, in the early 20th century. Um, and they introduced, you know, actual tactics, which hadn't really been seen before. Mm. Um, learning how to, to operate the new offside rule things like that, and Arsenal were at the <laughs> forefront of that. Um, and, you know, Chapman obviously um, died quite suddenly and early, tragically. Um, um, but then his legacy sort of went on, I think, and, and Arsenal sort of built on that over the coming years, and mm. long after he'd gone, were still building on the Chapman legacy. Mm. And it, it's where we always, uh, Arsenal fans, we always like to talk about the class of the club mm. and the history of the club, and most of it has come from here. 
always, always a classy club. There's always been a classy club. That's one thing you can say about. That's why they call us the Arsenal. You know, mm. the Arsenal. That's what we refer to. It's always been a classy club. Yeah, and you know, some great managers have been here as well over the years. And George Graham, very successful here. George Graham, um, Bertie Me. Forget, don't forget Bertie Me. The late Bertie Me and. Um, even Terry Neal, he had a, he won the FA Cup here as well. Give, give him some credit as well. He he didn't do a bad job, but we remember the money wasn't always it wasn't as much. Mm. They didn't have the money then as what they got now. So it sounds like now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was even less then. You know what I mean? So um, so it's mm. great. You know, great characters. We had mm. the great players. Uh, Rocky Rocas, one of my my all-time favourites. Uh, you got know, Anders Limpar, Georgie Armstrong, Charlie George, you know, all, all these great players, mm. you know. I, I've seen put the shirt on here. Mm. I mean, I remember being here when Ian Wright scored that, you know, the, the broke the Bastion's record with that mm. 179th goal. I mean, that was a f what a memory that was. Watching Burkamp here, I mean, it, that was all my time, but it was just incredible. Interesting that you mentioned Burkamp because there's a, a few pages in here about the, the very short tenure of Bruce Rioch. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and talking to a few Arsenal fans as we put this together, they actually speak quite fondly of, about Rioch. And mm. um, these, I mean, I guess it's very hard to play unattractive football when you've signed Dennis Bergkamp, of course. <laughs> but you know, people forget that he was the guy who brought Bergkamp here. And, yeah. um, and I think that's that's forgotten. And, and Claude mentioned um, Bertie Me there. Um, and there's a lot of Bertie Me in here. We've we've trawled the archives of World Soccer magazine for a lot of old interviews and that kind of thing. Um, and it was very interesting talking about how he has how he did um, in the 70s sort of rebuilt the, the double winning team very quickly realized mm. that they'd lost their hunger um, and players like Charlie George you know enormously talented um, but were shipped out because because me thought no I'm sorry you you know you, you don't want it as much as you did um, mm. and that's a really interesting one of the early um, examples that we've probably got in football of a manager having a really successful team but saying actually I've got to rebuild this ruthlessness team. yeah and mm. you, you know you didn't get it so much then mm. um, you know, we see it now, we saw it with obviously Alex Ferguson at Manchester United and so on, but um, back in the 70s, Bertie Mee was doing that. Mm. And do, do you think that, you know, that, like the blueprint for everything that goes on now at the Emirates has sort of come from those times and those days, all the innovations, I think all the, yeah. they, they're carrying a lot of that through still to the Emirates? I, I think this goes back to the 20s and 30s. I genuinely do. I, and I think, um, and I think Arsene Wenger is a, an intelligent man who, who knows the history of the club. Um, and knows that it has been a pioneering club and, and has, has set the benchmark for, mm. for new innovation um, throughout its history. And, and, and so he, he's sort of taken that on. And obviously he, he was going to always bring in some new thinking anyway. Uh, but I think he knows that that's, that's almost that's part of his job, mm. is, is to be a pioneer at Arsenal. Mm. Claude, I'm going to ask you the question that a lot of people will be watching this video and a lot of people ask themselves, Highbury or the Emirates, which one's the best one? It's this place, mate. It's this place, Highbury, no doubt about it. Going just off of nostalgia now, or you, you, no, you no. give it why, why, why is it better? Don't get me wrong, I like the Emirates. I do like the Emirates, but Highbury had these a lot of fans that cannot even go now, mm. you know, as well. It didn't have uh, that, that you came to football with, and now they've been priced out, which is a, which is quite a shame, really. That's modern day football has priced them out because. But they were really passionate fans, mm. and that's what I do miss. I do miss them as well. Mm. But it's also brought the Emirates has brought uh, people from all around the world as well, which is good thing as well because it's nice to get to be to go around the world as well. But I do miss the old the old fans that can't can't get here anymore. Mm. That's sad for me, I'm afraid. Mm. And you know, the, the old, it's incredible that they've seen that this place is so important that they've still left what you could say the facade of the mm. place so we know there's a behind there there's this development and they, <coughs> they've sort of tried to keep in the pitch and things like that as part of the feature of it do you think that it was all in their thinking when they were doing that as well uh, well you'd hope so you know mm. i mean i think they've done a really good job of this and you can come here and you can still see that this is arsenal yeah. albeit the emirates is just up the road um and you go past it on the main train line as you, as you go out of London, and you can still see the Emirates there, but there's Highbury still. You know, it's you can still there's a there's a shape of a stadium still there, and there aren't that many clubs that have been where they've moved to new grounds where they've actually kept that. 
Uh, and I think it's really important. I think that's true because I was at Leicester the other day, and that we're, we're their new stadium is, and the old we're the old ones. It's just like a car park. Yeah, I think that's that's happened pretty much mm. all over the place. And um, mm. the fact that the, the marble halls are still there mm. um, is really important. And I think yeah, it, that's good for football. I love the Art Deco design as well, as a being a person who used to be a surveyor. I still like all that all that style. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's lovely. And uh, you know, um, funnily enough, walking out of the tube station um, and walking to Highbury. Um, is, a, is a you know something I haven't done for a long time, um, and it's just yeah it's a really it's a nice walk down here and um, this this looks great. Mm. So finally, Claude, uh, was you here the last game? The last game here. I, mean, I remember being here and they gave everybody all the Wigan, yeah. yeah and they gave everybody all the the, the colours and placards and that was a great day. Uh, it was it was fabulous and we came from behind in that one as well, didn't we? <laughs> um, a few days before the the Champions League final, which was ended in disappointment, but at least we got the buoy. Um, it was a good day all round because mm. the chef, uh, the chef, done us a favour. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and, he did. Um, yeah, it was a it was a great day all round, and I, the colour of the stadium, the, yeah. the way they done everything, and yeah, the old the old players going all round the pitch as well. Yeah, was fan it was fantastic. Black cards held up, and that, yeah. it was fantastic, you know. And uh, I even think. Um, Pat Jennings was even here, here mm. on that day, you know. So, all credit to him because I know he's he's still big more more Tottenham in the more in the Tottenham camp now. But mm. but he he actually came for that for that game as well. So all credit to him as well. But mm. it was a fantastic day. Fantastic! It was a fantastic day. Finally, Simon, once again, tell us where we can get hold of this uh, this, this uh, fantastic is, book. This is available um, in all the usual newsagent supermarkets. Also now available on Amazon. I think there's going to be a link underneath this yep. um, for people to click through to buy. Um, but yeah, hopefully people will buy it. It's, it's something for, for Arsenal fans to really enjoy, I hope. So there you have it. Don't forget to check out the uh, Arsenal Bookazine, the Highbury years. And uh, next time you're coming to the Emirates, right, just make sure you come past this place and just take it in. You know what I mean, just remind yourself of that this is where it all started. It started here from Highbury. And it's moved around now to the Emirates, which, listen, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the Emirates. I think it's the, the best stadium in the Premier League. But it all started from right here. And up there was right in shame to the fans up there. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Make sure you check out the Highbury years. And we're talking about what the players that we think, top five players so far this season for Arsenal. Top five. We're going to start with number five. 